Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers knockoff review. Now I have somewhat of an unhealthy addiction to the scaled movie figures at the moment. I'm trying to get a series of figures together that scales particularly well with the M01 oversized Evasion Optimus Prime. Now I found a load of the Human Alliance figures on Sir Toys. So first up we have the KO of Soundwave with Mr. Gould, I think that's how it's pronounced, and of course Laserbeak. Now, first impressions, it doesn't feel like a knockoff. It actually feels quite solid. It just feels like a normal Hasbro stroke Takara uh, car. And Mr. Gould himself is pretty nice. The paint applications are okay. Uh, you do have some slight smearing on his head there. You do have he does have some strange posing on his hands. I assume that's to allow him to drive the car there. Uh, but he, he's pretty nice. He's got a nice jacket on with a kind of blue shirt underneath. Uh, the Human Alliance figures aren't the best for articulation, but it's still better than what we got with the uh, Masterpiece figures. Uh, we have a ball-jointed shoulder there with a nice pivoting pin in there. And we do have rotation on the wrists. Uh, the legs come forwards, bend at the knee, they go back slightly. There is a swivel in there as well. He's a little bit wibbly-wobbly, um, but they do actually scale pretty nicely, and he can assume the position of sitting down, driving his car. We have Laserbeak. Laserbeak himself is actually very, very nice. Paint applications are very clean, very very difficult to tell this apart from the official counterpart. Now, of course, I don't have the official counterpart. That was a tad expensive, being a uh, run that was cut short, and I believe it was only available in Europe and some of Asia. I don't think we got it here in the US and Canada. But he's a very nice interpretation of Laserbeak. I would have liked a ball on the neck there. I don't really know why they couldn't have put one on. I know it's some sort of gimmick in here, isn't it, with the firing missile underneath there. But I thought we could at least have had a ball-jointed uh, neck here. Just to give him some up and down motion on that head. But yes, he does look rather nice nonetheless. And then, of course, we have Soundwave. Soundwave is a gorgeous Mercedes-Benz with very nice chromed wheels. Uh, it's, it's kind of a silver paint, but it's done to a very nice standard. 6.3 litre. There's a lot of power under that hood. Loving the blue tint to the window there. Attention to detail with some nice vents on the side. He tabs together pretty well. Uh, not perfectly. Uh, but, like I said, he does feel very sturdy. It's just these wibbly-wobbly tabs at the back here. Now, I've got these to display them in their robot mode, but as far as uh, vehicle mode goes, I actually think they're probably the, the, very, the very closest I'm going to get to scaling with the M01 and the MPP-10. See, now I think that looks pretty darn good. Now, uh, Spike. Is in there, and Mr. Gould do fit quite nicely, although the door does have a mind of its own. Sometimes it will stay up, sometimes, yeah, not so much. <laughs> there we go, just don't breathe near it. Now, in all honesty, uh, I think this alt mode and the extra figure itself is fantastic. Uh, could do with a load of paint applications on there. I know you didn't get any with the original. Uh, the, the box art, you know, you had like the painted up version, it looked fantastic. I don't think Repro Label's done any labels for this, so I suppose it would have been quite a bit to cover this all chromey. Uh, but you do notice, with the knockoff especially, there are some differences in plastic colouring. Uh, the rough edges slightly around the wing mirrors there. Uh, a little bit... On the back here, we get Superior on here. There is, you do get the AMG logo still on the back and the SLS. Underside, it's actually remarkably tidy. The Human Alliance figures were very well done, in my opinion. Now, I am trying to collect them all. 
Uh, they don't do a knockoff of Skids and Mudflap, and they are pretty darn pricey. But I am selling a load of my stuff. I will be doing a monthly uh, video saying what's coming next, what I will be reviewing, and also if I have any housekeeping or anything for sale. So if you're interested in some of my bits like the uh, Fire King Combiner, etc., they will be going up for sale, and I'll be showing them off in my monthly videos. So anyway, back to Soundwave, let's get him transformed up into his robot mode. Now we do get some very nice clean instructions. Uh, they look like they're scanned version of the Takara ones, so let's just follow these. They tell us to pull open these front sections here, which is easier said than done when you have stubby little fingers and no finger nails. So pull open these sections here, like so come around to the side section and you want to pull this section and here this is all going to come untabbed like so and same with this side pull this and allow that to come untabbed and then untab this back section grab this section here and this is going to split and that allows all of this section here to fold down there's a tab on the inside, you want to bring it all the way around, and that's just going to tab into that blue section there. Bring it round and tab that in like so. And then just twist the section round and bring it round to the side. Now at this point, this bonnet section wants to just come up by itself, so just let it, let the section come back, and then let this section here rock back, and you're going to just push that back and that's going to tab over this section like so. so. Flip Mr. Wave's head upwards like so, and then rock these shoulders forwards so that tabs in behind. I come around to the top here, and uh, this section here is going to fold like this. You then bend this section back so this section straight. Fold this section over so it goes into this position, and then we're going to fold this section here, this is going to hinge over like so, so it's going to tab into this section here. So let's just bend that fully down and then that's going to just tab in to the underside like that. Rotate the arms around and we want to split this section here tabbed in pretty securely. There we go. And these, unfortunately, are going to form the legs. Now split Soundwave's thigh and bring that down. Rotate this joint around the front so the uh, rear lights are now facing the front of Soundwave. Uh, then come down and you want to move these sections down. So this one comes down like so. This one here folds around and this one at the back here that's going to fold down and unfortunately that is pretty much Soundwave's legs. Right, come around to the arms. You want to get this like this. This shoulder section here will come down like so. There's this ball jointed section here that's going to come around to the front like this. Come around to this arm section, bend it. You want to bring this section down, this section up. Bring out this fist section, and that's going to come around like so. And you're going to flip the tire section. This shoulder section here is actually on a rotation tab. So just pivot that around to cover off the shoulder section. Come around to the back section here. This is going to flip up, like so, and then down. And these are just going to sit on the back of the shoulders, like this. And here he is, all transformed up. Now, it's kind of at this point you look at the deluxe version of uh, Dark of the Moon Soundwave, you think, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. <laughs> the proportions on this are quite off. Those legs are laughable. Soundwave missed a lot of leg days at the gym. 
But that being said, he is pretty darn hench, isn't he? Uh, I do like how broad the shoulders are, and I love the um, Mercedes section at the front there. Not too keen on these big glowing sections on the arms. Uh, it does look very much like the animated, uh, Transformers animated version of Soundwave, and it's kind of like that boom wagon. Uh, now, of course, we can transform Laserbeak into kind of like a bike thing. Now, you flip open his projectile underbelly. Now, this is very delicate. It keeps wanting to fire. Literally, if you touch that, that fire. Uh, yes, anyway, you flip open this underbelly. And basically, these leg things, the wings will come down, like so. And they're going to join underneath. So we bring that down, that down, like so. And then they are just going to tab in together on the underside like this. And it's basically uh, kind of that. Uh, that is actually the mode. And he can kind of come in there. You can put his legs through and he can stand on here and he can hold on there. It's rubbish. Complete and utter rubbish. Now, if you're going to mount Laserbeak anywhere, you could have him in his cannon mode on Soundwave's shoulder. But Mr. Spindly Legs is already quite top and back heavy so that's not going to happen they try and encourage you to have your human alliance figure riding somewhere on your decepticon uh, i dislike that idea quite a bit now of course we can transform laserbeak back into his bird mode and he fits quite nicely on soundwave's arm but my personal preference is just having laserbeak as laserbeak now I do have the Human Alliance Bumblebee en route to me, uh, but just for now, here he is with the oversized Age of Extinction Bumblebee. And of course we also have the oversized Age of Extinction Lockdown. Now this personally is why I got the Human Alliance figures. I think they scale very well indeed with the likes of the M01. Uh, I believe uh, scale-wise M01 is meant to be about... 28 feet tall and the likes of bumblebee etc are about 14 i think so i think that's pretty good scaling right let's just take a look at the articulation on soundwave the head can open up left and right the shoulders uh, they do rotate you do get a lot of hindrance by these pads here it goes up and down you can go up and out like so. You've got a bend at the elbow, you've got these boomy bits on here. Hands can go inwards and outwards. We don't get any waist rotation because it's all locked in, part of the mechanism there. Feet, if you can call them feet, come this far out, this far out, you get a bend at the knee, you get a wibbly wobbly shin, uh, you can get the toes kind of curl. Uh, that's about it for articulation D. Detailing is pretty nice though. I do like the detailing, that's a pretty nice face sculpt. Again, very crisp paint applications, no bleeding there. It's a bit, uh, kind of a bit of a wibbly mess in there. If you go right in close, uh, it almost looks like he's got some eye sockets there as well. Um, but it's nice, he does look very much like Soundwave. He feels very Hasbro-esque. And for those who can't afford to get the ridiculously priced cancelled version, then uh, he's a pretty good effort. He's extremely back heavy. Uh, I wonder if I can tighten up these joints on the inside here. Uh, not, not, it doesn't look like I can really do much. It's just a matter of balance in him, I think. But all in all, he is definitely worth the money if you are a movie fan and if you want to start getting your bots all in scale. Now I've got a few more of these to do. I've got uh, Barricade, I've got Jazz, I've got Leadfoot to name but a few. So it's enough to be keeping me busy. They're definitely very nice figures, very impressed and I honestly can't wait to get the entire set. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to order this figure, click the link in the description here below that takes you through to the Sir Toys sale page. And until next time from myself and KO Human Alliance Soundwave, goodbye.